Sorting the IG grid is available in multiple as well as single sorts. And I'll show you how you can do it on the grid itself as well as through the API of the control. Here's an instance of the grid with sorting enabled. Now you notice that the active column is initially sorted. I can also go through and sort by full name as well. Now you notice that there's a multiple sort now enabled on the grid. I can also include higher date and on and on. Now to remove a sorting from the grid, I'll hold down the shift key and when I click on the column header, that removes the sort from the grid. That's the interaction from the header. I also have the ability to sort programmatically as well. So when I click on sort full name, it runs a method off of the IG grid sorting feature, sort column, and then it give the grid index and say whether or not you want it to be ascending or descending. In this case, the way I've set it up is that this toggles the column so I can switch back and forth between sorts. Now setting up sorting is this simple process of just defining the feature in the grid. So as I scroll down to the script, you can see that here I have the table with the ID of grid, which is what I'll use to instantiate the grid against. Then as I initialize the grid, you can see that I'm pointing to that ID and have the auto generate columns and some basic properties set just as before. Data source is equal to data, which is this array from up here and then setting up my columns in a real basic fashion. So in order to enable sorting, in the features collection, I have to add the sorting feature, and that's done by adding the sorting name. The other thing you need to make sure not to forget, which I kind of passed by pretty quickly here, is that under the resources, I have to add iggrid.sorting. So this tells the script loader to bring in the JavaScript and CSS files that are required in order to enable the sorting feature. And I'll keep pointing out a couple times, you want to make sure that you don't have a space between that comma and the listing of the different resources. Putting a space there will generate an error that can be kind of hard to find. So going back down to the feature, you can see that the name is sorting and I'm saying that the sorting type is local. Now apply sorted column CSS defaults to true. I've turned it off here just to show you how it works. But when this is enabled, the sorted column has a special styling to it. So in this case, it's colored blue. I've set the case sensitivity to true but it defaults to false. And I've also set the first sort direction to descending. Now you can choose to sort on multiple columns or single columns, and mode allows you to choose that setting. You also have the opportunity to create a tooltip for the sorted columns or unsorted columns. So here I've just put in sorted and unsorted. And you can also narrow down two specific columns through the column settings property to say how you want each column to behave. In this case, you'll notice I have the first sort direction set for this column specifically different from what I have set from the grid itself. And as for all of the features, there's a number of different events that are associated with the feature. But here I'm showing you how to handle the column sorted event. The event arguments that are passed into this event can tell you which sort direction you're looking at. So sometimes if it's not sorted at all, it'll come in as undefined. So you want to make sure that you deal with that state. So from here, if it's undefined, that column is unsorted. Otherwise, I'll have a sort direction that I can use in order to log. In this case, I'm building up a message that says which column is sorted either ascending or descending. Now to handle the toggle on the sort, I've come down and wired up this click event to the button. So here I've just said any button that has the role equal to sort, I'll bind to that button. And then I've got some variables set aside for the column settings, the initial direction, and the index that I need to sort on. So the first thing I'm doing is looking at the button itself and pulling out the data sort on index value. So if I scroll up to the markup, you can see that here's the button. I have the role set to sort and the data sort on index equal to one. So this is saying that I'll be sorting on the full name or the second column in the collection. I'll scroll back down to the script and you can see that I'm doing get attribute and pulling out the value from data sort on index and running parse int in order to get the actual integer value of that index. Then I can take a look at the grid. From the grid sorting feature, I can access one of the options saying column settings. From there, I have access to the whole column settings collection. Once again, if it's not undefined, I can go in and take a look at the current sort direction and basically switch for whenever the current setting is. 
Once I have the appropriate direction that I want to sort against, then I can call sort column off of the grid sorting feature, passing in the appropriate index and the direction in which I want to sort. So the sorting feature gives you an opportunity to enable much of the behavior by default and also take control of how you will sort columns in the grid programmatically as well.